Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. As always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, simply subscribing by email will get you a top 200 study guide. It's a 31-page PDF. Uh, great if you need a refresher out in practice. Uh, great, useful tool if you're taking pharmacology classes, board exams. A uh, great tool for uh, many clinicians, healthcare professionals um, to utilize and, and benefit from. So again, go take advantage of that, reallifepharmacology.com. One other note I wanted to mention, uh, I get occasional mentions, can you do this podcast, can you do that podcast uh, on a specific drug, uh, please go to reallifepharmacology.com, uh, go under the uh, podcast tab, and you should be able to search the specific drug you're looking for. I've also got them categorized. If you look at the uh, right-hand sidebar, if you're viewing from a, a laptop computer, uh, sometimes they don't pull into all the podcast platforms, but I've done uh, hundreds of, of podcasts at this point. So uh, definitely go check it out uh, if you're thinking of a, of a fairly common drug that's being used. Uh, odds are likely I've already done that podcast. So again, you can find all those at reallifepharmacology.com. All right, the drug of the day today is isovuconazole. Uh, brand name of this medication is Crisemba, and this drug is under the class of azole antifungals, but there definitely are some uh, important differences with this agent that I think you, you definitely need to be aware of for sure. So first off, you may see the drug uh, stated or its salt form stated instead of isovuconazole. Uh, you may see isovuconazonium sulfate as the actual drug. And that's the reason for that is it is a prodrug. So it's immediately cleaved into the active drug uh, by plasma esterases, which active drug is considered isovuconazole. So kind of an interesting note there. The other important note with that that I wanted to mention is uh, if you see uh, 372 milligram dose, 186 milligram dose, that's referring to the salt formulation, okay? Um, whereas that's equivalent to, so the salt formulation of, of 372 uh, is equivalent to 200 milligrams of isovuconazole. Salt form of 186, that's equivalent to 100 milligrams of the active drug isovuconazole. So uh, definitely important, I think, to, to remember that, that pro-drug formulation. Uh, there is IV and oral options. Uh, I think one important distinction from, let's say, a drug like voriconazole, which is used for similar indications... Isovuconazole doesn't contain the cyclodextrin vehicle, SBECD. Okay, so long story short on this, this particular uh, component can accumulate in renal impairment, and there has been some associations with uh, kidney and, and liver toxicity. So um, with that said, if you've got somebody with significant renal impairment, uh, this cyclodextrin vehicle can accumulate and potentially increase the risk of those things. So isovuconazole doesn't have this vehicle, voriconazole does. So that's definitely a, one differentiating factor there. Uh, mechanistically, uh, isovuconazole being an azole antifungal, it inhibits the production of ergosterol. Remember, ergosterol is needed as really a, a building block of um, the cell membranes of fungi. And this uh, mechanism, basically what's actually inhibited, the enzyme that's actually inhibited, is lanosterol 14-alpha demethylase. Okay, So that ultimately blocks the conversion of lanosterol to ergosterol. Let's talk a little bit about usage. So I mentioned uh, isovuconazole being a potential alternative to voriconazole. So there's definitely some 
uh, overlapping indications there. So uh, invasive aspergillosis, uh, potentially candidiasis off-label, and another invasive species, mucormycosis. Isovuconazole is going to be a potential uh, alternative in that situation. Uh, now, tying in the adverse effect profile, let's talk about this a little bit because there's um, one maybe specific reason why you'd select isovuconazole over voriconazole or other azole antifungals. Uh, so first off, kind of generalized adverse effects. So GI upset, um, potential increase in LFTs, low potassium levels, uh, infusion reactions. That's it's pretty rare, um, but obviously drop in blood pressure, chills, shortness of breath. Uh, that has been reported with isovuconazole. Uh, uniquely, uh, isovuconazole causes QT shortening. So most often when we think about drugs, we think of QT prolongation. Uh, isovuconazole has been associated with QT shortening. So in a patient with QT prolongation risk factors, whether it be other medications or electrolyte imbalances or so on and so forth, um, this is a differentiating factor of isovuconazole. And I think an important one to note if you've got somebody with, you know, QT interval greater than, you know, 500, for example, obviously we're going to avoid or try to avoid any other agents that are going to prolong that further. So uh, definitely a, an important distinction there. Uh, along with that uh, cyclodextrin vehicle that I mentioned before in why you may uh, choose isovuconazole or voriconazole in certain indications there. Now, why is isovuconazole typically not used versus voriconazole? Well, clinicians generally have more experience with voriconazole and uh, direct costs may be more expensive as well with isovuconazole. So that's why um, generally at this time, most are probably going to choose voriconazole unless we've got a uh, potential contraindication uh, in invasive aspergillus and, and things like that. So let's talk about pharmacokinetics a little bit. Um, Half-life very long, 130 hours. Uh, so that's important to note that, you know, maybe a missed dose or you miss, you know, the dose by a few hours or something. It's probably not going to be a, a crazy huge deal with isovuconazole versus other agents that have a much shorter half-life. Uh, high volume distribution, so generally good penetration into various parts of the body. And then oral to IV. Oral has a very high bioavailability. I believe it's something like high 90%. Um, so essentially, uh, bioavailability is equivalent to uh, IV dosing there. So that's a good thing, um, a, an easy, simple thing uh, to handle there. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, ambulatory care, geriatrics, NAPLEX, BCMTMS, psychiatric exam, go check out meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. Your support there goes directly to support this podcast. Uh, if you're a clinician, a dietitian, physician, med student, PA student, nurse practitioner, uh, we've got a growing list of resources on drug interactions, case studies, lots of different books on Amazon. All those links, meded101.com slash store, S-T-O-R-E. All your purchases there go to help support this podcast. So uh, books are a great gift for students and uh, folks of that nature really learning pharmacology uh, and really learning the application of how we use that pharmacology knowledge. So again, go check out meded101.com slash store. All right, wrapping up with drug interactions. SIP3A4 is a problem with pretty much all the uh, azole antifungals. Isovuconazole is no different here. Okay, so CYP3A4 inducers, particularly strong CYP3A4 inducers, as well as strong CYP3A4 inhibitors. Uh, we're going to generally want to avoid isovuconazole, or we've got to change the uh, CYP3A4 inducer or inhibitor. So reminder, CYP3A4 inducer, they're going to reduce concentrations of isovuconazole. 
Strong CYP3A4 inducer examples include carbamazepine, rifampin, St. John's wort, phenytoin. CYP3A4 inhibitors are going to raise concentrations potentially of isovuconazole. So some strong CYP3A4 inhibitors, clarithromycin, um, some of the HIV medications, ritonavir, atazanavir, cobisostat, uh, older antidepressant, nefazidone. I can't say I see it used real often in practice. Uh, another CYP3A4 inhibitor there. So generally, we're going to avoid the use of isovuconazole in that situation. Or if we feel risk-benefit that we absolutely need a nasal antifungal, we feel we need isovuconazole, uh, we're going to look to potentially change uh, that CYP3A4 inducer or inhibitor. On the flip side, isovuconazole inhibits CYP3A4. Uh, many, many drugs are impacted by CYP3A4 inhibitors. So colchazine concentrations, fentanyl, midazolam, uh, rivaroxaban, apixaban. I uh, also wanted to mention there is some P-glycoprotein uh, activity as well from isovuconazole. So a drug like digoxin concentrations can go up because of that. So many, many drugs um, can be affected by CYP3A4 inhibitors like isovuconazole. Very, very important to remember that. Personally, uh, if you're not comfortable with drug interactions and isovuconazole is being used, you definitely have to run a drug interaction screen, okay? Really, really important. Many, many drugs, like I said, can be affected by this. Um, isovuconazole and some of the azole antifungals I typically always run a drug interaction screen, particularly if you got a patient on, you know, 5, 10 or more meds. Uh, definitely much more important there uh, where we may overlook something in that situation. So again, uh, if you see this drug, I would definitely run the drug interaction screen for sure. All right, with that said, that's going to wrap up the podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Also, go to realifepharmacology.com, get your free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. Definitely a no-brainer for you to have that, whether you're a PA or a nursing student, med student, so on and so forth. Um, go check out and support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. We've got books on nursing pharmacology, drug interactions, case studies, uh, board certification exams for pharmacists. So go check out all those resources. Support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. If you've got comments, suggestions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email, mededucation101 at gmail.com, or you can track me down on LinkedIn as well, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.